But why do people have reservations about Brock Purdy? And why are people so reserved about Trey Lance? If Trey Lance with all these weapons, that's the thing. We saw him last year. There was no George Kittle. There was no Christian McCaffrey. There's something to that. Because defenses was stuffing out Debo Samuel mm-hmm. with those jet sweeps. Hell, remember the 50-yard play against Seattle where he he broke that play? Debo, so he was, there was two dudes in the backfield for a three-yard loss. Debo made that happen. Debo made that happen with his legs. Are we sure Trey Lance can't be the guy? Well, I think the biggest reservation that I have, it's not the film that he's put out or anything. It's the the way his teammates talk about him over the last year. Not not more recently because it feels like they're, the tide is turning on the conversation, but it's listening and reading how the teammates talk about him, how they look at him, how they're responding to him. I think there's a, a, a real element where you could totally tell the difference when Brock took over – it was almost like unanimous the way everyone was yeah, talking about it. Even Brandon Ayuk was like, yo, we got a quarterback. I got to look. This guy is making plays. Right. So to me, like, I, the players always tend to know because they see a lot of the closed door practices that we don't see. And they're obviously, there's something that they all notice, whether it's in the huddle, mm-hmm. whether it's in film study, whether it's just, you know, hey, the ball gets delivered to me on time or I'm blocking for him and he knows exactly, you know, what's going to happen pre snap. The way that the teammates have talked about Trey contrasted with the way the teammates have talked about Brock, to me, that's as big of an indicator yeah. as any of the film study that uh, Brian Baldy or that you and I might, with our novice eyes, be looking at when we're watching games back. No doubt. No doubt. 888-957-9570. What has convinced you that Brock Purdy is a guy? I got another one, too. When I'm just thinking about the starts of the season. Because the Niners have gotten off the back-to-back slow starts. Now, it hasn't mattered because they got to the NFC Championship game. But on the flip side, you could say it has mattered because you don't get the bye week. There's only one bye week per conference. Uh, the Eagles are able to sit back at home, play the New York Giants on a Saturday night, and then welcome the Niners on a Sunday afternoon. They got the extra day of rest and the home field advantage. Niners 2021. Oh, boy. <sighs> Going to Dallas, Green Bay. By the time they got to SoFi Stadium in L.A., they were Trent Williams' ankle was busted. Debo Samuel was banged up. Jimmy Garoppolo had a, what, a broken thumb? He was banged up. They were hurting. They were hurting bad. Well, as you watch that quarterback, Doc, I I think this to me, we're talking about like reservations, and I just look at the whole room as a whole, right? Darnold, Trey, and Purdy. I don't know about Brandon Allen. We will see tomorrow. So let's just put him to the side. I look at that entire room, and I say to myself, the amount of guys who can make it through a season like Burrow, even Josh Allen got hurt with the UCL last year, and it, it affected his his efficiency. Mahomes, seeing Kirk Cousins barely make it through the season. Mm-hmm. There's a real question mark on health for this quarterback room. Yeah. This offensive line and the play calling and the quarterbacks themselves couldn't make it through one, two, three quarterbacks last year. Right. They couldn't make it through two quarterbacks the year before that. They barely got Jimmy G to the finish line in 2019. 2020 was an absolute disaster for quarterback health, right? So, to me, quarterback health is like the biggest unknown quantity in all of this. And I think it's a fair thing to be like, dude, the the guy who we all love, who put out great tape, had a major elbow injury. Yep. The other guy, Trey Lance, who looks like an Adonis, has been hurt every single time he stepped on the field. Yep. And then Sam Darnold, poor play, and been hurt. Yep. Quarterback health is, is to me, the number one variable for all three guys. Honestly, moving in, now that I think about it, can't, you said that the Niners have been the exception to the rule, and I agree with you, that they don't need the greatest quarterback play to get deep into the playoffs. For right now. For right for now. For this team. For this team. But things can change. But it feels like they do need that quarterback. Super Bowl 54. You didn't have that quarterback to take you over the top. Shanahan didn't trust Jimmy Garoppolo in the first half to run a two-minute drill. Then by the end of the game, he doesn't make the throws. He misses guys. And it's like, all right, maybe you move on from him. The quarterback doc proved to me that you need a guy. You look at Burrow and Mahomes going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I don't care if it's Purdy, Trey, or Darnold. Are they good enough to get past those type of teams? You don't need to win the gauntlet of the AFC, though. I think being in the NFC it's gives easier. them a much easier path. But a-, a, you might not face Philly. Who knows? Maybe something happens before you get to them. That's You can't control that. 
Who else really scares you? Like, who are you out dueling in the NFC? We'll, we'll see. Jordan Love? We'll see. We'll see. Jordan Love, I, uh, let's let's be careful no, with I, him. I, yeah, I, I, I hear I, you. I'm interested I hear to see you. Jordan I'm interested Love. to see him. But, Matt Stafford? But, but, but honestly, say, say if it is Philly. Derek Carr. Philly. Yeah, right. Get out of here. Philly. If it's Philly, and they're there. Yeah. Because they may be like, I don't, I don't see a team better than Philly in the NFC right now. I agree with you. Jalen Hurts was going blow for blow with Patrick Mahomes. He would have been the MVP of the Super Bowl if they won. Right. Do you have a quarterback who's going to go in there and outduel Jalen Hurts with all the weapons that he has? Well, you're hoping that you, you know, that for a one game scenario, yeah, you can do that. All right. See, I don't. And then you play the AFC Super Bowl representative. I know. And, and that could be Mahomes, you, that could be Burrow, that could be Josh Allen. So we're talking about two games. <laughs> you got, but I, I, that's what, I guess that's what I'm saying. Like, you could still be a Super Bowl contender. But also, when you – go ahead, go no, ahead. No, but you could still be a Super Bowl contender, and maybe you don't have to have that variable play itself out. Cool. And then we also don't know – like, let's say – let's play this thing out here. Brock, at some point, whether it's week one or week four, comes back and he starts to ascend – Who's to say by playoff time that he reaches a whole nother level of quarterback play? Yeah. Because he was a rookie last yep. year. He could. Right? He that may- lost in a lot of this is he was a rookie. He was a rookie. He was a rookie. Can he get better? Can he get worse? I don't know. When we looked I had, at Jimmy I G in 2017. The, I hadn't considered uh, the we, can he get worse. Well, we looked at Jimmy Garoppolo after 2017. He got worse. He came in in 2017 without knowing the playbook, throwing the guys like Marquise Goodwin, Kendrick Bourne, and Trent Taylor. Was... Playoff Jimmy in 2019 worse than regular season Jimmy? Well, Kyle, no, he was worse than regular season Jimmy. Okay. Yeah, no doubt. What about in 2021? The regular season was uneven, man. He was, I think he was better in 2021 regular season than he was in the playoffs. Nah. Playoffs, he did Oh, in the playoffs. In the playoffs. I thought you were talking about 2019. Okay. So, like, this does happen. Like, Dak is a better regular season quarterback than a playoff quarterback. It does happen. Steve Young was a much better regular season quarterback than a playoff quarterback. Playoff quarterback, he was not good. I mean, these are the facts. These aren't, I'm I'm not going to argue. I love uh, Steve. Here's the thing, though. Having quarterbacks who are not great, right? Okay, two games you got to get past. Let's just say in this hypothetical, you got these quarterbacks and you're like, hey, they're not great. But I just need him to beat Jalen Hurts one time, and I need him to beat an AFC <laughs> representative one time. But the problem with having quarterbacks who are not great is that in the regular season, all of a sudden you're having battles with the Las Vegas Raiders and you're going to overtime. All of a sudden, Seattle, that game is a lot Jared, closer. Jared Stidham. You know what I'm saying? Jared Stidham. All of a sudden, you're like, yo, we don't have a lot of margin for error. You know, you look at the Dallas Cowboys, and they're going to be coming with that defense. All of a sudden, that game's a lot closer because you don't have that great quarterback to get you over the top. All of a sudden, the margin for error, you kind of go back that, to the pack a little bit. That I agree with. And they have such a comprehensive roster that it feels like it offsets whatever deficiencies you might have in the quarterback, whether it's Jimmy right. from years past, you know, uh, Brock, if it's Darnold, well, Trey, whatever. Like, they're loaded. And that's where, like, we were really robbed of seeing it last year. Yeah. I mean, we, we were, were robbed of it. We and were. I still believe Philly's going to win that game. I, the Niners winning would have been an upset. But we were robbed of seeing if he could rise to that moment. Right. Because he did rise to the moment against Seattle. And he definitely rose to the moment at times in the second half against Dallas. Right. And, and look, late in Seattle, he did have a great fourth quarter against Seattle in that wild card game. But boy, late third quarter. It was constipated. It was. It was some hairy, hairy moments. It felt like Seattle... Um, Started to lay down in that second half. After that half. fumble. After yeah. that fumble with Geno and the Niners yeah. went down and scored, it was like, okay, night-night. Yeah. It's over. I'm very worried about Seattle this year. Well, that's the thing. And would you be worried if you had a franchise quarterback? Honestly, if you had a franchise quarterback on this team with this roster. I mean, we'd be saying, we, now, we'd be saying 15 again, and 2. But again, some people may think Brock Purdy is the franchise quarterback. I'm eager to see who thinks that right now. Because when we talk about franchise quarterback, now we're talking about big boy money. Well, franchise quarterback, to me, there's no debate. So yeah. if I say to you, Patrick Mahomes, franchise quarterback. No debate. Who's debating you? Yeah, nobody. Josh Allen, franchise Nobody's quarterback. Nobody's debating you. Joe Burrow, franchise quarterback. Trevor Lawrence. I think there might be a little debate. And that's a why. A little? A little, a little. And again, using the Brock metric, people want to see him do it again. But he is the number one overall pick. He was just. His pedigree is you great. You know, his pedigree is great. 
in taking that Jaguars team last year Look to the playoffs it. and winning the playoff game. Monty, if he has a great year this year, I don't think anyone questions it. That's two it. in a row. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I don't think anyone questions it. Just like if Brock had a great year this year, I don't think anyone questions I don't think there's any debate with Trevor Lawrence. You really I, don't? No, I, not right now. Not after what I saw last year, the second year. Because Urban Meyer ruined his rookie year. And even in his rookie year, he showed flash. Remember, he went over to London, he won yeah. a game, came back, and I was like, okay, this guy can make all the throws. He's got to learn how to take hits, yeah. get out of bounds or whatnot. And then he wins that playoff game last year. They go to Kansas City, and you know, it was a little back and forth. The guy fumbles late in the game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Trevor, I think, is him. Well, so, okay, oh, that's fine. That's I, just me, though. My, my setting on franchise quarterback is no one's debating. Is there a debate with Lamar Jackson? I think there is. I think there is. Whether fair or not, I do think a lot of people are skeptical on him. And going back to the regular season versus playoffs, right. B, what's the number one thing? He has a one playoff game. Exactly. I get that. Right? He's and got so, the one playoff win in Tennessee. And and to me, he's amazing, but there are some legitimate questions. Aaron Rodgers is a franchise quarterback, even though he's old as hell, right? Yep. And, and there's questions about his playoff performances. Justin Herbert, is there any debate? I think Justin Herbert is a franchise quarterback with a crap situation around him. I don't think there's anybody. What, be watching him in person. Yeah. He made some throws. I, I cut all. You know what I They didn't have anybody, Herbert. and they didn't have anybody playing. No in wide game. receivers, right? No, it, 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 I was watching him, and I kept thinking, if the Niners had Herbert, we'd be talking about could this team go undefeated? See, if wild. they had a guy like that, am Trevor, I tripping? Trevor, and I think Trevor Lawrence. I would rather have him than Herbert. Really? Absolutely. Herbert's put together a couple of great years. He has. Trevor's been here two years now. Herbert's stuck in a bad division, unfortunately. He is. He is he's With screwed the worst in that coach? one. Yeah. Right. With a defensive well, coach and an offensive league and an offensive thing. Dude, yeah. Trevor Lawrence gets Doug Peterson and boom, they go to the next level. Yeah. That's no, you know? that's a great point. Uh, but even like if you put Lamar Jackson on the 49ers. I think we, everyone will be saying 14 and 3, 15 and 2. Super Bowl. Yeah. Well, with McCaffrey. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, they would. You know, you think about some of these guys, like no debate franchise quarterbacks. That's why I watch the quarterback doc. I get it with Kirk Cousins. And I saw somebody on the chat, uh, the Comcast business text line, that is. I forget the number, but they basically said, you know, Kirk Cousins is, overrated, is underrated. And I'm thinking to myself, you can't be underrated when you make that much money. When teams, when Minnesota pays you that type of money and you get paid that money, and he's had. Weapons in Minnesota. There's been no debate well, about the, the weapons he's had. People thought I lost my mind. I'm not saying resume. I'm not saying resume. Randy and T.O. and Jerry. I'm saying in terms of physical God-given talent, Justin Jefferson has as much God-given talent as any wide receiver at the position ever. Some of the plays that he's making in that dock, it's like one-handed, two fingers, right. Kirk and Cousins. four guys. Am I tripping? No, Kirk Cousins J -J is throwing in double so coverage. Sick. So Kirk Cousins... Can't be underrated when he makes that much money. He can't be underrated when you had the weapons that he had. Thielen, before Thielen got a little older last year, but Thielen was really good for them yeah. for a long time. David Cook, really good. Hell, don't forget, Kirk Cousins did have Stephon Diggs at one point. And Stephon Diggs couldn't wait to get out of Minnesota. Let, let me use this one on the Brock thing. I think outside of the Bay Area, people view Brock the same way a lot of people outside of Miami are viewing Tua, where it's like, yeah, I know. But I got to see more, and you got to stay healthy. And now they're very, very different situations, right? Obviously, Tua has better pedigree because of where he was drafted, so maybe people have their things set in stone on him playing in Alabama. But I think also with the head injuries that he's had, a lot of people are like, I just don't think he can stay healthy. I think people with the Brock elbow injury, it's like that's a legitimate serious injury. I think Brock's played better than what we've seen from Tua in a much smaller window. And yet I think there's the conversation about the two is very, very similar outside of their markets. Hmm. I think there's a reservation on both of them. Like, yeah, I got to see it for a full season. Yeah. Will we see that for a full season this year? Will we see it? Or will Trey start week one? Will Sam Darnold start week one? Training camp starts tomorrow. We'll be down live at the Hilton Hotel in Santa Clara. I cannot wait for that.